Lord, the light of your love is shining in the midst of the darkness shining. Jesus, light of the world, shine upon us. Set us free by the truth you now bring us. Shine on me. Shine on me. Shine, Jesus, shine. Fill this land with the Father's glory. Blaze, Spirit, blaze. Set our hearts on fire. Flow, river, flow. Flood the nations with grace and mercy. Send forth your word, Lord, and let there be light. Lord, I come to your awesome presence from the shadows into your radiance. By the blood I may enter your brightness. Search me, try me, consume all my darkness. Shine on me. Shine on me. Shine, Jesus, shine. Fill this land with the Father's glory, blaze, Spirit, blaze. Set our hearts on fire. Flow, river, flow. Flood the nations with grace and mercy. Send forth your word, Lord, and let there be light. As we gaze on your kingly brightness, so our faces display your likeness. Ever changing from glory to glory, mirrored here, may our lives tell your story. Shine on me, shine on me. Shine, Jesus, shine, fill this land with the Father's glory, blaze, Spirit, blaze. Set our hearts on fire. Flow, river, flow. Flood the nations with grace and mercy. Send forth your word. Lord, and let there be light. Good morning. Welcome to our Sunday morning worship here at Alberton. Whether you're here in the auditorium or joining us remotely, we're just thrilled that you've made the decision to worship the Lord with us this morning. Um, I will say the quick reminder for those of you like me, uh, if you haven't done it, please silence your phone. <laughs> um, we do have several upcoming activities. One is our family picnic that's coming up April 23rd. Um, we have a number of folks who are on our prayer list as, as usual. We want to keep those folks in mind and lift them up in prayer and do what we can uh, to encourage them. Uh, Cynthia George uh, is recovering from hand surgery. Matt Fleshman is also recovering from surgery. He's here this morning, but having some mobility issues, so please keep him in your prayers. Uh, we're thankful that Ralph Brewer had a successful shoulder surgery, but please keep him in, in prayer as well, along with uh, Barbara Dyer's brother-in-law, Brian, who's in critical condition in the Tompkinsville Hospital. Uh, we want to continue to remember Lewis Geiger uh, as he 
recovers from his surgery, and we want to remember Kathleen Cagle uh, with the pain issue she's having. Uh, Connie did uh, has gotten four of the infusions she was scheduled for. She's had to delay some of them because of illness, but hopefully she'll finish that on Thursday. Um, and there's others I'm sure I didn't mention, but please keep all of these folks in your prayers. We also want to express sympathy and, and remember in prayer uh, some of our family here who've lost loved ones. Uh, Sonia Byram's dad, Hal Garland, passed uh, this past week. Uh, we want to remember the family of Brian and Quintella Mosley in the death of their grandfather, William Woods. And we want to continue to remember the family of Kathy Overton uh, in the loss of her mom, Joanne Carson, and also uh, Sean Dye's family in the loss of, of his aunt. Uh, are there any other announcements that I've missed that we need to make this morning? If not, I'll turn, oh, I'm sorry, I have a thank you note here that I was about to overlook. <clears throat> Let me read this to you. Uh, dear Alvaton family, thank you so very much for all your prayers, hugs, cards, and encouragements as we walk this journey at Vanderbilt Cancer Center. We know we are guided and protected by our amazing God and uplifted by your love and prayers. The preliminary diagnosis is a precancerous condition. Praise God. There are more tests and appointments in the coming weeks <clears throat> and we humbly ask for your continued prayers. We love you all and are blessed to be part of the Alvaton family. You shine the light and love of Jesus in who you are and all you do. God bless you all. Love Kathleen and Johnny Cagle. I'll turn it over to John. All right. For those of you that were here yesterday, we had a good after, good morning, early afternoon with our Easter egg hunt, a little bit earlier than usual, but a great turnout yesterday. Um, and for the jokester that threw about nine eggs up into a tree, I thank you for that I had to get a ladder out to get those, but all eggs are accounted for. So um, hopefully uh, whoever mows out here probably won't hit a few of them when, when they're out there, hopefully. So but it was good. Good morning. We had a good turnout for that, and uh, thank you to everybody that was involved that that helped uh, either fill eggs or, um, or, or ran reconnaissance on uh, on a on egg egg placement and all those things. But uh, we we appreciate everybody's help with that. But a great morning. If you would please stand as we sing this first song. He bore it all. I need my bases to kick in here. My precious Savior suffered pain and agony, he bore it all, that I might live. That runs of sin and set the captive free, he bore it all, that I might in his presence live, he bore it all, that I might see his shining face, he bore it all, freely bore it all. I with him I live, I stood condemned to die, but Jesus took my place. All that I might in his presence live. They placed a crown of thorns upon my Savior's head. It all that I might live. By cruel man with spear, his side was pierced and bled. All that I might in his presence live, he bore it all that I might see his shining face. Freely bore it all. I with him might live, I stood condemned to die, but Jesus took my place. All that I might in his presence live. Up Calvary's hill in shame, the blessed Savior trod. He bore it all that I might live. Between two thieves they crucified the Son of God. He bore it all that I might 
In his presence live he bore it all, that I might see his shining face. Freely bore it all, I with him might live, I stood condemned to die, that Jesus took my place. All that I might in his presence live. Please be seated. Next song, if you're following along the songbook, would be number 577. We bow down. After singing this song, we'll be led in our opening prayer. You are Lord of creation and Lord of my life, Lord of the land and the sea. You were Lord of the heavens before there was time, and Lord of all, Lord, you will be. We bow down and we worship you, Lord. We bow down and we worship you, Lord. We bow down and we worship you, Lord. Lord of all, Lord, you will be. You are King of creation and King of my life, King of the land and the sea. You were King of the heavens before there was time, and King of all kings you will be. We bow down and we crown you the king. We bow down and we crown you the king. We bow down and we crown you the king. King of all kings you will be. Let's pray. Our dear and most gracious Heavenly Father, holy is your name. God, we come to you this morning with thankful hearts. There's so much we have to be thankful for. God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the warmth outside. We thank you for the changing of the seasons that we see all around us, your nature being renewed once again. God, we're just reminded of how, through nature being renewed, of how we are renewed through your Son. And we're so thankful for that. God, we're thankful for this time of worship this morning. We thank you that we can be here together as a church. God, we pray that as we worship this morning, your name will be glorified, that we will worship in spirit and in truth. God, we thank you for those who are serving at this church. Thank you for our elders. We pray that you will give them wisdom. We thank you for our ministers and their families. We ask that you bless them as they work with the congregation here. Thank you for all those who serve you, whether it be behind the scenes or in any other way. We're just so thankful for all those who are willing to be your hands and your feet for the church. God, we pray for those who are sick. We pray for those who are recovering from surgery. We ask that you just provide your healing hand to those. We pray for those who are grieving the loss of loved ones today. And we ask that you give them comfort. God, we are thankful for your church, not just here, but throughout all the world. We're thankful, God, that we can worship you today without fear of of persecution. We know that there are those throughout the world who follow you despite persecution. And we ask that you would give them strength to persevere. God, we know that you never promised us an easy life, and you You've told us that we would have trouble in our lives if we follow you. We just pray that you will be with us through good times, through difficult times, and that you will give us the strength we need. 
God, we know that your ways are higher than our ways. And we know that it's difficult for us to understand, and so many times we admit that we try to make our ways your ways. God, please forgive us of this. God, please help us to make your will our will. Help us to be that soft clay that you can mold into what you would have us to be. God, we thank you so much for your son. If it wasn't for him, we wouldn't be here today. We thank you for his sacrifice. We pray that we'll never forget that sacrifice. We pray that you will forgive us when we sin, that we will remember that that blood that Jesus shed continually washes us. God, we do have so much more that we're thankful for, and, and we can't say it all right now, but we know that you know what's in our hearts. We ask that you go with us now through the rest of this service. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Number 590, if you're following along in the book. 590. We'll sing two songs and then have our um, Lord's Supper thought. Jesus is all the world to me, my life, my joy, my all. He is my strength from day to day, without him I would fall. When I am sad to him I go, no other one can cheer me so. When I am sad, he makes me glad, he's my friend. Jesus is all the world to me, my friend in trial sore. I go to him for blessings, and he gives them o'er and o'er. He sends the sunshine and the rain. He sends the harvest golden grain. Sunshine and rain, harvest of grain. He my friend. Jesus is all the world to me. I want no better friend. I trust him now. I trust him when life's fleeting day shall end. Beautiful life with such a friend. Beautiful life that has no end. Eternal life, eternal joy. He's my friend. Number 344, low in the grave he lay. We'll sing all the verses and then the chorus at the end. Low in the grave he lay, Jesus my Savior, waiting the coming day, Jesus my Lord.
Death cannot keep his prey. Jesus, my Savior, he tore the bars away. Jesus, my Lord, up from the grave he arose. With a mighty triumph for his foes, he arose a victor from the dark domain, and he lives forever with his saints to reign. He arose, he arose, hallelujah, Christ arose. For our communion, Eucharist, Lord's Supper thought this morning, uh, I want to go to 1 Corinthians 11, the passage we typically read, and I want to focus on one specific phrase and, and some depth there. But verse 23 is where I'll start. For I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night that he was betrayed, when he took bread, he had given thanks, he broke it, and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he also took the cup after the supper, saying, This is the cup, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Whoever therefore eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty concerning the body and the blood of the Lord. Let a person examine himself then, and so eat the bread and drink of the cup. For anyone who eats and drinks without discerning the body, eats and drinks judgment on himself. That last little phrase there, we, as we read scripture, we tend to notice the scary ones. And, you know, that's the one that seems to stick out most of the time when you think about what to do or not to do with this passage. And there's typically two different ways that you can think about this. And the first one I think is pretty obvious that he had just got done saying how Jesus relates himself to the bread and the cup, uh, saying that's his body and his blood. And so the first way, and the first one I want us to think about as we partake of the bread, is to think about the body of Jesus. And often we tend to think of the sacrifice, but remember that God being in a body in the first place is amazing. And not only that aspect of the body, but that after he was sacrificed, he was raised in a body. Not in a spirit form, but in a body that they were able to touch the scars. And they were able to see him and confuse him for human beings. When we think of the body of Christ, think about the amazingness and awesomeness that God came in a body. And that he was willing to sacrifice that body. And that the power of God was enough that he was even able to raise that body after it was dead. So as we take the bread, let's think of that. So let's pray together. Father, we thank you so much that Jesus came to this earth, that he was willing to die, that he was willing to live, and that most of all, Lord, you showed that you have power over the grave by raising him again. Lord, we thank you so much for that body that you were able to come in flesh, that you were able to come and stand face to face with us, and Lord, show us your great love through the way that Jesus lived. We thank you so much for that body, and as we take this bread, help us to reflect on the great gift that we were given through that, and it's in Jesus' name that we pray, amen.
For anyone who eats and drinks without discerning the body eats and drinks judgment on himself. The other way to look at this is there's a couple of interesting things that would point to something other than just the body of Christ with this. First of all, look at what Paul is getting on to him for. It's for not considering people who didn't show up. Second of all, when you look at the commands that Jesus gives, all of those are second person plural, which if you don't know what second person plural means, that would be the southern good word y'all. It's not just a you that you could confuse for thinking you could do this by yourself, but that it's a y'all command. And you think about how in today's world we tend to think of this as a me and Jesus thing. But then the third thing, and this is what people tend to point out and say he's clearly talking about something else, is he doesn't mention the blood. Up to this point he had been mentioning body, blood, body, blood, but here with this he says just the body. And then in the next chapter, he then talks about how the body of Christ is many members, that this body is more than just the head or just the ear or just the hand. So when we think about discerning the body, the other thing that we have to consider is the us nature of this, that Christ didn't just die for me, that he died for each and every one of us that are willing to profess his name and put our faith in him and consider him our Lord and Savior. And so when we do this communion, we have to commune. When we Eucharist, when we give thanks, it's not just me giving thanks, it's us giving thanks. And when we take of this Lord's Supper, where two or three are gathered, that's when Jesus shows up. And so it's us together that we have to be sure to keep in mind. Let's pray for the cup. Father, we thank you for this blood that you shed on the cross that cleanses not just myself, but each and every one of us in this room. And what a statement it is to the world when we gather together and we say collectively that you, Jesus, our, our Lord, that we live for you, that we are dedicating our life to you. As we take this cup, help us to see the greatness of the church, the, the plan that you had for the body, that together we will proclaim to the world that Jesus is still alive. Lord, thank you for this blood and help us to, to live a life worthy of it. And we pray in Jesus' name, amen.
the elders have chosen this time after reflecting on what Jesus has done for us to give back to the mission here at Alberton. Let's pray for that gift. Father, we thank you so much that we are blessed in the way that we are, not with physical blessings, but with spiritual ones, ones that last beyond the grave. Lord, we thank you for the, the life of Christ. We thank you for his resurrection that show us that the things that we have on this earth are temporary, that show us that every gift that we have, even the ones that are eternal, come from you. And Lord, as we consider what to do with this temporary money, as we consider what to do with the gifts that you've given us financially, Lord, just help us to reflect on the sacrifice of Christ. Lord, help us to think of how we can spend our money to further your kingdom, to better your church, and to help let more people know the good news of Jesus Christ. Lord, help us to do all this with a cheerful heart and with the spirit uh, of your Son. And this we pray through Jesus' name. Amen. song before our lesson this morning will be number 539. If you would please stand, we'll sing Higher Ground. 539. I'm pressing on the upward way, new heights I'm gaining every day, still praying as I onward bow. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. Lord, lift me up and let me stand by faith on heaven's table land, a higher plane than I have found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. My heart has no desire to stay Where doubts arise and fears dismay Though some may dwell where these abound My prayer, my aim is higher ground Lord, lift me up and let me stand by faith on heaven's table land, a higher plane than I have found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. I want to scale the utmost high and catch a gleam of glory bright. But still I'll pray till heaven I found. Lord, lead me on to higher ground. Lord, lift me up and let me stand by faith on heaven's table land, a higher plane than I have found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. Please be seated. Good morning, church. Started. Um, if we've got uh, 
Garrett and Tori Tribu and Miss uh, Tinley Ann, we're going to ask you all to start making your way forward, and you can bring Wayne with you. And uh, while they're making their way forward, we also want to recognize the Waddells who were up here last week, uh, Micah and, and Jacqueline and, and Vivian Emery. Uh, they are placing membership with us. And so if you all don't care while these people are walking forward, if you all could just wave so we can all see who you are, well, let's welcome them to the family. So. It's getting to be a habit, isn't it? <laughs> a good habit. This morning we have Garrett and Tori Tribu. Uh, Garrett is the son of uh, of uh, uh, David and Paula, Paula Tribu. I got it wrote down. Thank goodness. <laughs> uh, and this is the star of the show. This morning, Tinley Ann Tribu. Hold her up and I'll count to three. One, two, three. <laughs> See, practice makes perfect. Y'all doing good. Uh, there's probably few things in life quite as traumatic and life changing as the birth of a child, especially a firstborn. I think Garrett's still kind of got a deer in a headlight look, I think. <laughs> but, uh, there is a payoff. I mean, you, you, you're going to feel a love that you've never felt before. I'm sure Tori probably already does. For, for men, it may come a little later. For me, when the, after a few months and the personality started to, to develop, that's when it hits you. But it's, it's, it's an incredibly an intense love, and it makes you think about God's love for us. And it's, it's almost painful. <laughs> so... So congratulations, and I would like to present this Bible on behalf of the Alton Church of Christ to Tinley Ann. Let's have a prayer. Father, we give thanks for all the blessings that you give us in life. We're thankful, Lord, that you love us. We're thankful that you, that you gave us the ability to love each other. What, what a blessing it is, Lord. And we pray for this young family today, Lord, as, as they begin life with their with their baby. We pray that you'll bless them and be with them and help them toward that end. We pray, Lord, for her. We pray that she'll be, that she'll be raised as, as a wonderful Christian girl, which we know she will. We pray that you'll bless them and help them as they strive to do that. Please bless this family. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for loving us. In his name we pray. Amen. All right, well, uh, something that you all don't get to see that I get to witness is sometimes we can see what's going on back in the sound room because it's going on here, but it's not going on there. And uh, the people in the sound room just don't get enough credit for what they do, um, especially when the ministers don't communicate anything with them. And you can see the panic as they go through the screen trying to figure out where the PowerPoint is for the sermon. We don't have one um, today, so if, <laughs> no, no need to panic. Um, so. I mean, the screen's going crazy back here on this side. Eliz Elizabeth's back there. She's trying to figure out what's going on, and, and I forgot to tell her that nothing's going on. Um, so I uh, appreciate her, her doing that and, and all the up. You've put in a lot of effort over the past three minutes, and, uh, and so we appreciate that. Um, so we, we don't have PowerPoint. I'm not preaching this morning. Uh, we actually are going to have Rick Geiger uh, is going to be presenting our, our lesson this morning. Uh, he is uh, he came a while back and, and asked if, if he might present a lesson before uh, before he leaves. Uh, so if you're unaware, um, Rick is as he mentioned a few Sunday nights ago. Rick is is in the army, and um, as as such, as oftentimes is the case with military, they they don't get to stay in, in one place for very long, and, and so they're going to be moving here uh, pretty soon, uh, I guess. And and Rick maybe a little bit sooner than the rest of them is Rick has to go off and, and do some training so uh, I think what is it May is when you're leaving and then the rest of the family September okay so um, they've been certainly a blessing to this family and, and uh, will continue to be so for for a long time and uh, we're, we're grateful for them but Rick is going to come and, and deliver our lesson this morning and and give you all a break from listening to me so You to 
decided to join us at Alberton to worship the Lord our God this morning. Let's, uh, let's have a prayer as we begin our message. God, we pray that the worship that we have given you this morning has been worthy of your magnificence. We pray that uh, your message this morning will convict our hearts, that we will be drawn closer to you through it, and that through your message, you will be glorified and not me. And we pray these things in Jesus, our Lord and Savior's holy name. Amen. This morning, what I'd like to do is go over a uh, passage of Scripture with you. Now, this is going to be very familiar to a lot of you, and it is a controversial Scripture. There's a lot of difficult teachings in it, but just because something is hard does not mean that we should avoid it. Um, now, many of you will recognize this as I begin, and you are more than welcome to open your Bibles and follow along if you would like, but I would encourage you not to do that for a couple reasons. One is that we are recording this, and you can follow along at any time that you would like. But secondly, I would like for you all to be able to hear the message as the original audience would have done. Now, it started when Jesus saw the crowd, and so he went up on a hill, and he sat down. And his disciples gathered around him, and he began to teach them. He said, those who are poor in spirit are blessed because the kingdom of heaven belongs to them. Those who are in mourning are blessed because God will comfort them. Those who are humble are blessed because the whole earth will belong to them. Those who hunger and thirst to do what God says are blessed because God will satisfy them fully. Those who show mercy to others are blessed because God will show mercy to them. The pure in heart are blessed because they will see God. Those who work for peace are blessed because God will call them his children. Those who are persecuted because they do what God says are blessed because the kingdom of heaven belongs to them. And you are blessed when people persecute you and insult you and tell all kinds of evil lies against you because you are my followers. Be happy and glad, for a great reward is kept for you in heaven. Remember, the prophets who lived before you were treated in the same way. You are like salt for the whole human race. But if salt loses its saltiness, there's no way to make it salty again. It's become worthless, so it's thrown out and people trample on it. You are like light for the whole world. A city that's built on a hill cannot be hid. Neither does anyone light a lamp and then put it under a bowl. <laughs> Instead, they put it on the lampstand, and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, your light must shine before people, so that they will see the good things that you do and praise your Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to do away with the law of Moses or the teaching of the prophets. I have not come to do away with them, but to make their teaching come true. I tell you, as long as heaven and earth last, not the least point, not the smallest detail of the law will by any means be done away with, not until the end of all things. So then anyone who disobeys even the least important commandment and teaches others to do the same, will be least in the kingdom of heaven. On the other hand, whoever obeys the commandments and teaches others to do the same will be great in the kingdom of heaven. I tell you, the only way that you will be able to enter the kingdom of heaven 
is if you are more faithful in doing what God requires than the Pharisees and the teachers of the law. Now, you've heard that people were told in the past, do not murder, and anyone who does will be brought to trial. But now I tell you, if you are angry with your brother, you will be brought to trial. If you call your brother, you good for nothing, you will be brought before the council. If you call your brother, you worthless fool, you will be in danger of going to the fires of hell. So if you are about to offer a gift to God at the altar and there you remember your brother has something against you, leave your gift there at the altar. Go at once and make peace with your brother. Then come back and offer your gift to God. If someone brings a lawsuit against you and takes you to court, settle the dispute quickly while there's time before you get to court. Once you're there, you will be handed over to the judge who will turn you over to the police and you will be put in jail. I tell you, you will stay there until you pay every last penny of your fine. You've also heard it was said, do not commit adultery. But now I tell you that anyone who looks at a woman with lust is guilty of committing adultery with her in his heart. So if your right eye causes you to sin, tear it out and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one part of your body than for your whole body to go off into hell. If your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. It is much better for you to lose one limb than for your whole body to be thrown into hell. It was also said that anyone who divorces his wife must give her a written notification of divorce. But now I tell you, anyone who divorces his wife for any reason other than her unfaithfulness is guilty of making her commit adultery if she marries again. And the man who marries her commits adultery as well. You've also heard it was said, do not break your promise, but do what you have vowed to the Lord that you will do. But now I tell you, do not use any vow to the Lord when you make a promise. Do not swear by heaven, for it is God's throne nor by earth, for it is the resting place for his feet, nor by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. Do not even swear by your own head, because you cannot make a single hair white or black. Just say yes or no. Anything else you say comes from the evil one. You've also heard it was said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But now I tell you, do not take revenge on someone who wrongs you. If anyone slaps you on the right cheek, let him slap you on the left cheek as well. If someone takes you to court and sues you for your shirt, let him have your coat also. If an occupation troop forces you to carry his pack a mile, carry it two miles. If someone wants to borrow something, lend it to them. If someone asks you for something, give it to them. You've heard it was said, love your friends and hate your enemies. But now I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you so that you will become children of your Father in heaven. For he causes his sun to shine on the good and the bad alike. And he gives rain to those who do good and to those who do evil. Why should God reward you if you love only the people who love you? Even the tax collectors do that. And if you speak only to your friends, have you done anything out of the ordinary? Even the pagans do that. You must be perfect as your Father in heaven is perfect. Be sure you do not perform your religious duties in public so that people will see you. If you do these things publicly, 
you will not have any reward from your Father in heaven. So when you give something to a needy person, don't make a big show of it. That's what the hypocrites do in the worship centers and on the street corners. They do it so that people will praise them. I assure you, they have already been paid in full. But when you help a needy person, do it in such a way that even your closest friend won't know about it. Then it will be a private matter, and your father who sees what you do in private will reward you. And when you pray, don't be like the hypocrites. They love to stand up in the worship centers and on the street corners so that everybody will see them. I assure you, they have already been paid in full. But when you pray, go in your room, close the door, and pray to your Father who is unseen. And your Father who sees what you do in private will reward you. And when you pray, don't use a lot of meaningless words as the pagans do. They think their gods will hear them because their prayers are long. Don't be like that. Your father already knows what you need before you ask him. This then is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, may your holy name be honored. May your kingdom come. May your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day the food we need. Forgive the wrongs we have done as we forgive the wrongs others have done to us. And do not bring us to hard testing, but keep us safe from the evil one. For if you forgive others the wrongs they have done to you, then your Father in heaven will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others, then your Father will not forgive the wrongs you have done. When you fast, don't put on a sad face as the hypocrites do. They neglect their appearance so that everyone will see that they are fasting. I assure you, they have already been paid in full. But when you go without food, Wash your face and comb your hair so that others cannot know that you are fasting. Only your Father who is unseen will know. And your Father, who sees what you do in private, will reward you. So do not store up for yourself treasures here on earth, where moth and rust destroy, where robbers break in and steal. Instead, store up for yourself riches in heaven where moth and rust cannot destroy, where robbers cannot break in and steal. For your heart will always be in the same place that your treasures are. Your eyes are like a lamp for your body. If your eyes are sound, then your whole body will be full of light. But if your eyes are no good, then your body will be in darkness. So then if the light in you is darkness, how terribly dark it will be. You cannot be a slave of two masters. You will hate one, love the other, be loyal to one, despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. So this is why I tell you, do not worry about the food and drink you need in order to stay alive, or the clothes for your body. After all, isn't life worth more than food? And isn't the body worth more than clothes? Look at the birds. Can you imagine them uh, planting seeds and gathering a harvest and storing it in barns? Of course not. Yet your Father in heaven takes care of them. Aren't you worth much more than birds? Can any of you extend your life even a little bit by worrying about it? And why worry about clothes? Look how the wildflowers grow. They don't go to work. They don't make clothes for themselves. 
But I tell you, not even King Solomon, with all of his wealth, had clothes as beautiful as one of these flowers. It is God who clothes the grass. The grass that's here today and gone tomorrow, burned up under the sun. Won't he be all the more sure to clothe you? What little faith you have. So don't start worrying about where will my food come from or my drink or my clothes. These are things the pagans are always concerned about. Your father knows you need these things. Instead, be concerned above everything else with the kingdom of God and with doing what he requires of you. And he will provide you with all these other things. So don't worry about tomorrow. It will have enough worries of its own. There's no need to add to the troubles that each day brings. And don't judge others so that God will not judge you. For he will judge you in the same way that you judge others. And he will apply to you the same rules that you apply to others. So why are you looking at the speck in your brother's eye and pay no attention to the log in your own eye? It makes no sense for you to say to your brother, please, let me get that speck out of your eye. When you have a log in your own eye, <laughs> you hypocrites, first take the log out of your own eye, and then you will be able to see clearly to take the speck out of your brother's eye. Do not give what is holy to dogs. They will only turn and attack you. And do not throw your pearls in front of pigs. They will only trample them underfoot. Ask, and you will receive. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be open for you. For everyone who asks will receive, and anyone who seeks will find, and the door will be open to those who knock. For any of you who are fathers, if your son asks you for bread, would you give him a stone? <laughs> or would you give him a snake if he asked for a fish? As bad as you are, you know how to give good things to your children. How much more then will the Father in heaven give good things to those who ask him? Do for others what you want them to do for you. This is the whole meaning of the law of Moses and the teaching of the prophets. Go in through the narrow gate, because the gate to hell is wide, and the road that leads to it is easy, and there are many who follow it. But the gate to life is narrow, and the way that leads to it is hard. And there are few who find it. Be on your guard against false prophets. They come to you looking like sheep on the outside, but on the inside are really like wild wolves. You will know them by what they do. A thorn bush does not bear grapes. Briars do not produce figs. A good tree produces good fruit. A poor tree produces bad fruit. A good tree cannot produce bad fruit. And a poor tree cannot produce good fruit. And any tree that does not produce good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. So then you will know the false prophets by what they do. Not everyone who calls me Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven but only those who do what my Father in heaven wants them to do. When the judgment day comes, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, in your name we spoke God's message. In your name we cast out many demons, and we performed many miracles. And then I will say to them, I never knew you. Get away from me, you wicked people. So then anyone who hears these words of mine and obeys them is like a wise man who built his house on rock. 
The rains poured down and the rivers flooded over and the winds beat hard against that house. But it did not fall because it was built on rock. But whoever hears these words of mine and does not obey them is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rains poured down, the rivers flooded over, the winds beat hard on that house, and it fell. And what a terrible fall it was. When Jesus had finished saying these things, the crowd was amazed at the way he taught. He wasn't like the teachers of the law. Instead, he taught with authority. I said at the beginning that there was some hard things in this passage, that Jesus teaches some, some difficult things for us to hear. But the reason Jesus is able to deliver such a hard message and to deliver it with such authority is because he embodied every word of it. He devoted every aspect of his life to God and to loving others as God does, even to the point of dying for those that he loves, for you and for me. This morning, if you would like to accept Jesus' challenge to follow him and devote all of yourself to God, then we encourage you to do so. You can come forward or we'll have an elder and his wife in the back. But if you would like to be, to devote all of yourself to God, to be ceremonially buried with Jesus in baptism, then we encourage you to do so. And if you've already made that commitment, but it's something that you've struggled with, if this message has provoked you, then we encourage you to come as well as we stand and sing. decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. The world behind me, the cross before me. The world behind me, the cross before me. The world behind me, the cross before me. No turning back, no turning back. Though none go with me, I still will follow. Though none go with me, I still will follow. Though none go with me, I still will follow. No turning back, no turning back. My cross I'll carry till I see Jesus. My cross I'll carry till I see Jesus. My cross I'll carry till I see Jesus. No turning back, I'll follow him. Will you decide now to follow Jesus? Will you decide now to follow Jesus? Will you decide now to follow Jesus? No turning back, no turning back. Rick, thank you so much for that lesson this morning. Um, it is a good glimpse every once in a while to, to see how everyone would, back in, or back in what we call biblical times, but would see how they would be, speak, be taught to, because a lot of times we're standing in front of a podium and we speak, but he was sitting in front of them, and sometimes he was sitting and everybody was standing, um, looking at and trying to see over the top of people, so thank you for that kind of uh, the, the mental aspect of that as well. 
Um, for those that are visiting, thank you for coming. Um, we're, we, were, we are glad you are here and uh, stick around for a few minutes after we get done. Um, after this song, we will um, ha have a prayer and then do birthdays that we normally do as our, our tradition here um, weekly. Um, but stick around. Um, we do have classes for all ages. Um, come find me if you don't know where that class is at, um, and I'll uh, be glad to point you in the right direction uh, from there um, as well. So um, in Christ alone, uh, we'll sing this song. And then we'll be led in our closing prayer, and then we'll have birthdays after that, or any other announcements that we might have. In Christ alone, my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my song. This cornerstone, this solid ground, firm through the fiercest drought and storm. What heights of love, what depths of peace When fears are stilled, when striving cease My comforter, my all in all Here in the love of Christ I stand In Christ alone who took on flesh, fullness of God in helpless babe, this gift of love and righteousness, scorned by the ones he came to save, till on that cross as Jesus died, the wrath of God was satisfied For every sin on him was laid Here in the death of Christ I live There in the ground his body lay Light of the world by darkness slain, then bursting forth in glorious day. Up from the grave he rose again, and as he stands in victory, since curse has lost its grip on me, for I am his and he is mine, bought with the precious blood of Christ. No guilt in life, no fear in death, this is the power of Christ in me. From life's first cry to final breath, Jesus commands my destiny. No power of hell, no scheme of man can ever pluck me from his hand till he returns or calls me home here in the power of christ i'll stand go ahead and be seated Do have a do have a couple of announcements I'd like to, to make here concerning the, the security group. Um, first of all, just a few things. You'll notice here on a door, those of you can see it, we've got a green triangle on it. What that green triangle indicates is that uh, um, if the if the door, if that triangle's on the outside of the door, that door is open, it's unlocked. Um, and otherwise that triangle on the inside means that door is locked from and nobody can get in from the outside. Um, and so door number three, this door here, will stay locked during service. We'll have it open for people can entering. This is not really new news, but we want to just clarify. And then we lock it once service starts. 
Um, we, we have, uh, uh, you know, if you're interested in participating in this group, um, yes, aha, good deal. That's good. I'm glad we're seeing this. So we'll get to that in a minute. Keep standing if you want to, if you stand, yep. Um, if you're interested in joining security, you're just, uh, you can go, go through the light post app and, uh, and see us and you can go through home menu involvement, church operations. And you'll leave a message, and myself or uh, Jeff will, will get it. Um, we're also going to start a medical team. Now, we've had this off and on, but we really would like to get it sort of off the ground and, and, and running. These individuals will be responsible for, for all types of medical issues here at church that happen during church service. Uh, we, would, we would include taking care of any, any serious things, really. You know, uh, somebody seriously hurt, should something violent happen. Um, things of that nature. Uh, what we would like that group to do is get a list of equipment they'd like to have. Things of that nature. What would you like to have here on hand? What would you like? What would you think you need should something happen? Again, you could go through the, the Light Post app, go through a menu, involvement, church operations, and talk to Jeff and I, and we'll try to put this together. Finally, you see some people standing. Um, we're starting. We we have it. We have a thing on the app where. Jeff or the security will be able to send a message through Lightpost while you're here at church. The eventual hope is, and we've been working with the, the, the uh, app builder to get it to where an actually alarm goes off, similar to what happens like when, you're, when a tornado comes through or something. You know, if you're signed up through WBKO, their weather service you can send an alarm. So that's what we're, we're hoping we can do. You know, we've discussed many, many ways of trying to communicate with people. We've got an alarm we can use. Um, but all that is is a, just a buzzer. This we could say, what's going on? We would only use this in the most serious of things, okay? Something violent going on, perhaps maybe, you know, something like a, a, a lost child, things, things like that. We're not going to use it because, you know, there's a fight, two, two boys are fighting in the, you know, the Kirby building or something, all right? So, um, but this is what we hope to do. It is a means to communicate. We, we continue to develop this, continue to uh, uh, do different things with security and trying to keep things improving and, and make this a safe, safe and welcoming place for people. Yeah, you can go ahead and sit down now. So, sorry about that. So um, just we continue to try to make this a better, better place. Anybody that wants to help. I will say one thing I didn't mention. If you're interested in the security and, and you're a female, we, 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 we are completely open to that. There are times we will, if something should happen, we might need somebody, a female, to do certain things. Um, so uh, by all means, if you're interested, let us know. And thank you for your time. I'm glad Randall welcomed females into our group, too. I'm part of the security team. You don't have to be huge and threatening like me uh, to be part of the <laughs> security team. Uh, I tell you, I appreciate John's, uh, um, Rick's message this morning, and John's uh, leading of the songs this morning. I thought it was great. I know every week we're blessed for, with Stephen being up here and doing such a good job. We're, we're very blessed here. So if you would bow with me, please. Lord, we thank you for our church. We thank you so much for uh, the many people here who have so many talents that can be shared with us to uh, help to worship you. We know, Lord, we fall so short in so many ways. and. We pray, Lord, that you will help us to take the messages we receive each week to out with us as we go into the community, as we meet with other people, and, and we have dealings with people through, their, through our weeks. So we pray, Lord, we'll uh, do what you would have us to and, and help us to be led in the right direction. We pray, Lord, you'll be with all those who are sick and hurting. There are so many among our, our group who are going through things at this time. We pray, Lord, you'll be with them. Help them and, and bless them. Help us, Lord, to be encouraging to them and to help the way that we can. We pray you'll forgive us of our sins and help us to uh, do your will. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh, we've got one anniversary to announce. That's Kevin and Mariah Blaylock. Uh, good job, Kevin. You're doing great. I don't even know if they're here. Uh, now we've got a bunch of birthdays today, and I've got a bonus birthday. Uh, Carter Bratcher. There he is. 
All right, then we've got Erica Walker. She's here, I thought. She probably bailed on us. Jen Hall. Elena Hill. What's that one, John? Katie McCannon. Yep, Miss Katie. I know Miss Katie from Johnny Richards. Oh, okay. <laughs> I've, I used to see her in the office. Yep. Uh, Abby Oliphant. And then I've got another one here that's Alvaton Office. I don't know if that's supposed to mean like our anniversary, but you know, happy birthday us. <laughs> All right, start us off, John. Happy birthday to you. Thank you. 